Hey, how's it going everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast. And on today's video, we'll be talking about the 2023 recruiting class for the Texas Tech Red Raider football team as they officially have signed a top 25 class. If you were excited about what Joey McGuire and James Blanchard and the guys are doing on the recruiting trail, hey, all we ask you to do is like the video. But let's jump into it as we're going to look across some outlets that really had stuff to say about Texas Tech in their recruiting class because some of y'all may not know because of the early signing period, but technically yesterday was National Signing Day. I know, really doesn't get much attention anymore because of the early signing period and really justifiably so. Texas Tech really didn't have many guys sign yesterday. But when you look at what Texas Tech brought in, we're going to look at the recruiting class and start from top to bottom and some of the guys that really stand out. If you look over at Rivals, they had five, yes, five four-star commits. Isaiah Crawford leading the way with Tyrone West, Jamari Davis, Jordan Sanford, and then Justin Horn, the linebacker from Louisiana. We'll talk about him a little bit later as a guy that I really like in this class that I think can make an immediate impact for Texas Tech, at least on special teams. But let's go to the Dallas Morning News because they dropped something where they talked about each and every class in Texas and their own individual article. They gave the head of the class, the dark horse, uh, the media impact player, biggest need met, and then biggest need not addressed. But let's start with the head of the class in their opinion, and it's Jordan Sanford, the, su the safety from Manfield Timberview. Listen, Jordan Sanford is a very good player. He's the 21st ranked safety in his recruiting class. He will play right away for Texas Tech, whether that's on special teams, but I truly believe he's going to be on the two deep right away. He's already on campus, enrolled in January, an early enrollee starting to get in that playbook, will participate in spring practice, and that is big for a guy like him that should come in and really make an impact right away. Now, what does that look like? Well, we don't know exactly, but I do think that he will play special teams right away, maybe even at a gunner position really fast guy right here but I also think that he could be a backup to a guy like CJ Baskerville in that secondary for Texas Tech maybe Tyler Owens depending on where you want to play Brendan Jordan another safety that you got in this recruiting class I really like Jordan Sanford and I think it's a good call by the Dallas Morning News when it comes to the head of the class and who is the best player for this class for Texas Tech now, on their dark horse, they had Jake Strong. And I, I'll be honest with you, I love Jake Strong, but I would not put him as the dark horse, in my opinion. I would have Justin Horn as the dark horse. I already mentioned him a little bit, the four-star linebacker, according to rivals from Louisiana, one of the fastest players in the country at the position. Nay, no, just one of the fastest players in the country, period. He's got one of the eight fastest hurdle times for a man his size in U.S. high school history. Think about that for a second. The guy is a sideline to sideline impact player. And I think, again, he's going to take a couple of you know weeks, maybe a year or two, to really get to where you want him to be at that linebacker spot. But I truly do think that you're going to see him on the two deep as well because he's going to make an impact in practice and the coaches are going to notice him because of that rangy and long athletic build that he has. But more importantly, just how downhill and how fast he gets to his top speed. But that's not to take away from Jake Strong. They had him as the dark horse, and I like him as the quarterback commit for this class. I really like how he doesn't have to have any pressure on him. He can come in, learn the playbook, learn from Kitley, learn from Morton, learn from Shuck, and be that third quarterback on this roster for Texas Tech. And you, you look at kind of the stats that he put up. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Um, despite posting big numbers, Strong was always seeing himself as an underdog is what the Dallas Morning News said. He only had two college offers going into his junior season despite a strong, no pun intended, sophomore campaign. Strong showed consistency his second year starting, posting 2,300 passing yards, 30 TDs. That led to his first Power 5 offer from Indiana and Texas Tech in late January of 2022. Obviously he signed with the Red Raiders. And again, I really like what he brings. He's got some size. He's got a really strong arm. Again, no pun intended. There are so many puns you can make with this kid. But I really like what he can do for Texas Tech, and he has no pressure. Just come in, get your reps in and practice, learn the playbook, and then he could be ready in a year or two for the Red Raiders. Their immediate impact player was Isaiah Crawford. And I, I agree with that. Um, he is a guy that I truly think will play meaningful snaps 
outside for Texas Tech. He's not going to be a Tyree Wilson replacement by himself, but him and Steve Linton, I really like that combination. Long rangey guys with speed and a ton of bend on the outside. He will truly be an impact player for Texas Tech, and he's rated as the highest player in this recruiting class by multiple outlets. So I really like Isaiah Crawford, the post-Texas native. The biggest need met was defense overall. And we know Texas Tech wanted to build some depth defensively. They did just that, and they got a lot of speed doing it. Now, the Dallas Morning News says that the biggest need not addressed is running back. I strongly disagree with that. Uh, they have a ton of running back talent. They mentioned Sir Roderick Thompson leaving, who is having a fantastic senior uh, bowl out there in Mobile, Alabama. But you got Taj Brooks. You got Cameron Valdez. You've got... Uh, Donnell as well. I, I think you're fine at the running back position, and I think you're going to move one or two of those athletes that you signed in this class to the running back position. Maybe Willis, maybe Davis. I think Davis is probably more likely, but you're going to have a ton of running back depth for Texas Tech. Moving on to Dave Campbell's Texas football. They did the same thing where they ranked every Texas university in terms of what they'd give their recruiting class grade and who's going to stand out to them. But before we get to that, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long. We're giving you daily Texas Tech videos from football, men's basketball, Lady Raider basketball, softball, baseball, you name it. We've got you covered right here when it comes to Texas Tech Athletics right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Help us get to 2K. We're well on our way and we appreciate each and every one of y'all for helping us get to uh some pinnacle points for us on this journey for Lyle and I. We really, really do appreciate it. All right, this is from Dave Campbell's Texas Football. They have the 2023 rank for Texas Tech at 26. The five-year recruiting rank average is 50th. Obviously, that's going to change a little bit because, well, Joey McGuire's here. The overall grade that they gave Texas Tech for this recruiting class was an A. I'd agree with that. By the way, the Dallas Morning News gave the B, so let me know what you think about that in the comments. But they had this to say to Dave Campbell's Texas football. Joey McGuire won't struggle on the recruiting trail, especially after posting the program's first winning record in the Big 12 since 2009. His first season in Lubbock also included wins over Texas and Oklahoma in the same season for the first time in school history. That momentum allowed McGuire and co to land the fourth best recruiting class in the Big 12 and in the state of Texas. It would rank second in the new look Big 12. 22 of the 26 signees play high school football in the state of Texas. And there's a couple of things that Joy McGuire and crew really prioritized in this recruiting class. First and foremost, speed. They want you to be fast. They have the fastest recruiting class in the country. That is not up for debate. Just go look at the speed metrics for this recruiting class. It backs it up and then some. You got to be versatile. You got to be able to do multiple things. You can't just come in here and think, hey, I'm going to play defense and not be available on special teams or anywhere else on the field, right? You got to be versatile and be able to play different positions. They also prioritize the state of Texas. Listen, there's a couple of states that come to mind when it comes to high school football talent. Florida, Texas, and California, in no particular order. But if you ask me, Texas has to be number one. There's a reason why Joey McGuire is prioritizing that because of the talent and also the relationships he and his crew have developed through their time in the state of Texas. It's no, There's no debate when Joey McGuire walks into a high school in the state of Texas, that makes an impact. He is well-respected. He's one of the goats in Texas Tech just really just what he's doing for Texas Tech right now on the recruiting trail, but also just Texas high school football in general. He is a GOAT when it comes down to that. I mean, on the recruiting trail, he's already a GOAT for Texas Tech. He's already got one of the highest ranked recruiting classes in Texas Tech program history, but especially when you walk into a high school like that and you're Joey McGuire, any high school in the state of Texas, he's going to make an impact and he's going to have a chance to land the guy that he wants at their respective high school. So again, one more time, Texas Tech is a top 25 recruiting class. I did want to mention this as well. This is from 24-7. You had Andrew Ivins, and then you had Blair and Golo. He said this, did Blair and Golo. We talk about stacking foundational classes. I think this is one of the best ones out there. It's going to be the best ever for Texas Tech in our rankings. That from 24-7. And that's the biggest thing for Texas Tech. You have to go out and you have to build a foundation. You've already done that somewhat with your 
last year's recruiting class, but think about it, that wasn't really Joey McGuire's first full recruiting class, even though he had a major impact on it, right? Now it's your full first year. You've shown some results on the gridiron. Now you're starting to build to that foundation a little bit more. And this 2023 recruiting class is going to do just that because I truly believe there are some immediate impact players in it. All right, let me know your grade for this recruiting class for Texas Tech, the 2023 recruiting class, a top 25 class for Joey McGuire and crew, one of the highest ever for Texas Tech football. Again, I am RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want the latest in Texas Tech athletics news and rumors, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.